Is the font size OK? Or should I make it bigger? OK. Uh, like this? Or even bigger? Uh, yeah, uh, in that case, I think I just open another. <laughs> Uh, I mean, open another window and uh, ah yeah, uh, clear or okay. I can see. Okay, uh, yeah. So this is the second time I do the Ruby talk here. Like last time was really, really, really bad. <laughs> uh, after that, I I feel that talk was so bad that I eat a lot of crap during the next month. So hopefully this this time I can do it better. And uh, yeah, I think I also need to make it faster. Because we are short, kind of running uh, short of time, so uh, this time uh, I just share five random Ruby tips. And frankly speaking, uh, before this meetup, uh, I actually don't know four of them. Yeah, so I, I mean, I, I mean, like before yesterday, yeah, before the day yes, yesterday, which I prepare. So, but after I prepare, like the best way of learning something is to actually show something. So yeah, it's like these five. I feel okay. It's very very nice tips from what I feel. Uh, so let me begin. So the first one is uh, binding and evolve. Uh, is uh, let me just show you the yeah binding. Yeah. So binding. Let like we know like okay. Uh, we can call the binding to get the binding of uh, to get the binding of the current scope. I would say that. Correct me if I'm wrong. So basically, uh, if you do a binding here, so you can do a Bending has a few. Uh, oh, bending has a few mm, methods like lo local variable get. So basically, from if you get a bending, you can get the local variable from that bending, or you can set a local variable for that bending. So uh, if you create a new instance A, and then you can get a uh, A dot get bending. So uh, if you, yeah, probably uh, let me just put my. Commands here. So, oops. Yeah. So basically, yeah. So basically, uh, how 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 you read this? Uh, uh, a dot get binding. Uh, if you print out the local variable which is uh, binding as a time, then you get the binding. Uh, so basically, uh, what you get is uh, this part because you define b. And then you can, and then you, if you call it twice, uh, like for example, if you create another, uh, sorry, uh, if you get bending, B1 is the uh, first time you get the bending, and then B2 is the second time you get the bending. And it turns out that uh, B1 and B4 are, uh, B1 and B2 are different. Okay, it's, uh, the local variables are the same, but the value of the local variables are different because you, got, you are getting it at a different time. So. Oh, it's the same. Ah, oh, because I couldn't not. So from here, you can see that the first time when we define, we define b as uh, one, and then the second time when we call, we define b as uh, two. So uh, when you, yeah, you can see for clearly from here. Okay, so this is bending, and uh, together with bending, I want to talk about the evolve. If I pronounce it correct, let me make it this part larger. So definition of Evolve is like it takes in a string, which is a string that it evaluates. And then the next parameter is the binding. Uh, it's basically the binding that you are evaluating this piece of code upon. And then the next, uh, next one is the file name and the line number. It's useful. I can show you later. So the first one is that, mm, let me see where am I. Yeah, so you can basically evaluate something. And this will just define A. Uh, it has a bit of trick here. Uh, I think I, don't, I just skip the trick because uh, running out of time issue. But later on, uh, you can try it out for the trick itself. Mm. And then, uh, for example, the use of the uh, so this uh, random file uh, corresponds to the file name, and then the forty-two is uh, the line number is useful for debugging purpose. So if I run the code, is uh, on the on this side, you can see that it gives me the error and uh, actually tells me that it's in the random file 42, which is corresponds to the 
parameter I pass in here. Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, so, and then uh, if we go on, so that, okay, together with uh, evolve and binding, we can create something called, um, this is just, just something that I create when I was trying to, the, to do the demo, like, uh, I will use this class defined later on. So basically, it's called uh, explicit evolve. So basically, what it does is, uh, hey, where is my syntax? Ah, okay. So what it does is, uh, it, it will initialize assign binding so that whenever we do the evaluation, we, we do the evaluation, we'll evaluate upon the binding. And uh, when we when we run the evaluation, we we'll, uh, we have two methods. One is the implicit which means we just run the evaluation silently. And then the next one is explicit, so which means uh, other than running it, we also output the expression itself and the result of the expression. So that is easier, it's uh, good for demo purpose. Uh, later on, I will use it. So, um, so basically, uh, I think it's quite self Explain. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, I think I need to comment out the errors, uh, the exceptions here. Yeah. So basically, mm, from my left hand side, it has the. Yeah. So basically, if I call it implicitly, I, it just uh, shows the echo and without showing you the result. And if I Call it explicitly. Uh, it just uh, tell you the result all at the same time, so it's easier for you to show the result. So this is the first tip, uh, the first long tip actually. Um, yeah. So uh, come to the second tip with the time now. Okay. So uh, come to the second tip, which is the object space each children. Uh, I use it to get the how they call descendant of the. Uh, class is quite useful for getting the descendant of the a certain class or module. Uh, let me show you the code. So for example, this is a setup. So you have a class A, and you have a class B, which is, uh, extends A. And you have a module M, and then you have a class C, which extends the, uh, include the module M, and then the D, which extends from C. Mm, actually, this a and B is not really used. So basically, uh, when you run the object space, uh, so it, the object space has uh, actually only have a few methods. One of them is called each object. So each object will, uh, what it does is uh, for a given class, it will give you all the instance that is defined for, uh, which are the uh, instance defined for this given class and pass back to you. Since uh, all the module or class are subclass of class, not subclass, but are the instance of class. So um, you, if you pass in the class and uh, you uh, you check if it extends M, so that you can get all the all the class that which extends M. I'm not sure if I make it clear or okay. Yeah, if you are not clear, like uh, later on we can discuss. And uh, yeah, this is the second tip. Uh, each object is uh, pretty useful when you are like in the Rails console of a huge Rails app. Like sometimes uh, hierarchy is so huge that you want to get a certain um, children of a class, class, a descendant of a class is quite useful. And then the next tip is uh, tail recursion, like. Um, like I, I think it's like several months ago, I learned the fact that Ruby doesn't really like tail recursion that much, because um, I think that that was because of a discussion that okay, because if it's tail recursive, that means when there is an exception happens, then the stack trace will be very hard to understand because you only got one stack, rather than uh, I mean if you do the if you do the tail recursion optimization then the previous stack will be gone because it has been opt optimized. So, uh, but there, there is a way actually to turn on the tail recursion. Yeah, tail recursion. So, 
So basically, uh, this is the uh, file that is uh, with the tile recursion turns off at first. So this file after level 10, so basically it's just a recursion, which uh, if, it's level, if it's less than 10, it will just increase the level by 1 and uh, do it tile recursively. And when it's about 10, it will just fail. So when you run, you just see, uh, uh, actually, because it's uh, because uh, font size issue, so actually there are 10 levels, like if you run the code, there are 10 levels. And uh, there are 10 levels because uh, stack trees. So the issue here is that, um, actually I just learned this yesterday when I was trying to prepare for the talk. So there is a Ruby VM that the uh, instruction sequence uh, compile option which tells you what the compile option that you are currently holding. So yeah, these are the set of compile options. And uh, for most of them, I don't really know what they mean. But I think if you Google and uh, try it out, uh, Google probably will not tell you. I tried some, it doesn't tell me anything. But, <laughs> but at least for one, like the tail recursion, uh, our tail call optimization, yeah. If you set this to true, it will actually optimize for the tail call. Like, Okay, let's try to set it to true. Okay. Oh, yeah, I have a comment out. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, now the statrix only give, got one level, which indicates that it has been tail recursion uh, optimized. Is this globally? Global, uh, yes. But uh, the thing is, uh, one interesting fact is that if you put this definition here, then this will not work. If you do it this way, it will not work. Like, it will not be tile recursion uh, optimized. Because uh, I, I, guess, what, what, I guess the reason is because uh, when, you r when you run the code, it will be uh, load into the uh, Ruby VM altogether. All so if you turn on the option, it doesn't work. But uh, I haven't tried it out, but let's try. If you put evolve, I think that will work. Let's try. Yeah, because uh, it will uh, evol evaluate dynamically. Yeah, yeah let's, it's just to re review the evolve also. And then, uh, yeah, the next interesting tip, which is the only one that I know before I prepare this talk, is the array. Like, array got a few operators. Yeah, I think it's, uh, since I have this uh, explicit evolve beautifully written, so you can just uh, read the code, I guess. Yeah, so basically, I define A and B, and then A plus B, you just merge them. A minus B, you just, uh, like, it do a diff. Times means repeat it several times and combine it together. And times with a string means uh, join. And then uh, and means uh, union. And then, oh, sorry, it means intersect. And then the pipe is uh, union. Yeah. It's an interesting pair, uh, operators upon the uh, array. Yeah, so this one is quite simple. And then the next one is uh, when I read the book uh, called. <coughs> Oh, I forgot the book. Uh, later on, I'll show you. It's uh, in the reference. So I just realized, uh, actually, uh, Ruby got catch and throw, which you will feel very comfortable if you are from Java background. Like, it, like it's, uh, catch and throw is like, it's, it's designed specifically for the um, float control. Like if you have exceptions, exception will have a uh, exception will uh, will have uh, it will can it will keep all the uh, stack trees. So when if you use exception for the float control, it will be a bit slow compared with this uh, catch and throw. So I think the code itself is uh, it can describe itself. So <laughs> basically, if you throw, you jump to the place with the catch, and then you continue the evaluation. And uh, if you do a speed comparison, you can actually see that uh, catch is actually five. Uh, sorry, 
two times faster than slow, if my memory is correct. Yeah, uh, this is uh, actually from the, I learned this fact from the book called, uh, where is it? Uh, the Complete Guide to Reels Performance. Yeah, it's really a nice book to read, yeah. Um, recommended by Winston. So, yeah, that's all for the five Ruby tips and a few recommendations. Number one is the book. It's uh, really a nice book. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> uh, yeah, he recommend me. So the next one is uh, Ruby Top Pass, I guess. It's actually a collection of Ruby tips. Like if you just, uh, when you have lunch or dinner, you just go there and watch the video, it's really nice. And then the, uh, the Ruby Doc, yeah, the Ruby Doc is, uh, actually all the things I mentioned is, are from Ruby Doc also. Like if you explore, it's, uh, it's a meta Ruby tip. Yeah, it's a collection of a lot of Ruby tips. Yeah, that's all. Thank you.